Sputnik was the first artificial satellite to orbit the Earth. Now, it wasn't a very sophisticated device when compared to modern satellites. In fact, it would be like comparing a hot air balloon to a jet aircraft. However, it did represent a remarkable step forward in technology and had a dramatic impact on the world for all sorts of different reasons. The official name of the satellite was Sputnik 1, as Sputnik 2 would see the launch of the first dog into space. The main body of the satellite was a round ball around about 58 centimetres across, but only 2 millimetres thick, consisting of two hollow hemispheres fixed to each other by 36 bolts. Now, inside the sphere was a radio transmitter, three silver zinc batteries, a thermal fan, in an attempt to keep the temperature between 20 and 30 degrees centigrade, and a remote switch to turn the satellite on. Fanning out from the satellite were four antennas, which would be deployed at a 35 degree angle. Now, in order to protect the satellite, the outer part of the hemisphere was a one millimeter thick thermal protective shield. It was made reflective in order to make it easier to track from the ground. Internally, the hemispheres were filled with nitrogen at slightly more than normal atmospheric pressure. Initially, it had been hoped to create a very light satellite, around 30 kilograms, but in the end, came in at 83.6 kilos. The satellite was lifted into space in the nose of an R-7 rocket, which is basically a converted intercontinental ballistic missile. Once Sputnik separated from the rocket, the orbit would then use the momentum gained from the rocket to continually orbit the Earth until eventually the orbit decayed and Sputnik would burn up on re-entry. The final stage of the rocket would also uh, orbit the Earth until it burned up as well. This meant the number of people who thought they could observe Sputnik in orbit by using various visual aids probably saw the rocket instead of Sputnik itself. The rocket put Sputnik into an elliptical orbit, travelling at about 29,000 kilometres per hour and taking just over 96 minutes to complete a single Earth orbit. Once the radio transmitter was switched on, Sputnik emitted a regular beep that could be received around the world for around about the next 21 days, until the batteries inside Sputnik actually failed. It spent almost exactly three months in orbit before burning up on re-entry. The consequences of this feat were quite dramatic and also long-lasting. The Russians had informed the world that they were developing a rocket to put a satellite into orbit, and they would shortly attempt to do this, but this had largely been dismissed in the Western world, especially in America, as propaganda, as they didn't think the Russians were even close to achieving this. When the Russians did actually manage to successfully complete the mission, they only published a very short article about it in their official newspapers, but then massively underestimated the impact that such a feat would have both on the Russian people and more especially on the rest of the world. It was only later that they went into overdrive with details of the achievement. The rest of the world, however, reacted immediately. The general public saw it as a tremendous achievement and it dramatically increased the attention on everything to do with space in general as a wider interest in science and engineering. The fact that individuals with some basic equipment could use their, that equipment to tune into the beeps coming from space gave them a personal connection with what was regarded as the future. The American government was also sent into something nearing panic, believing that Russia had the lead in what would become the space race. It put millions of extra dollars into education, focusing on maths and science. It also led to the creation of NASA and also what would eventually become DARPA. The other issue it raised was the Cold War worry about the missile gap between the Americans and the Russians. On the science side, in launching the satellite at the end of 1957, the Russians were attempting to find out how radio waves were actually affected by the ionosphere. Also, how to put satellites into orbit for later possible spy satellites. And also, by looking at the satellite's rate of orbital decay, they'd be able to calculate the density of the upper atmosphere, which would be crucial in later space missions. In general, it saw the start of the space race and the public support for the general exploration of space and heralding a bright new future for mankind.